My name's Pete Woods, you're watching Good Cause TV, and I'm here in the northeast of England with the painter Paul Piercy. And Paul, we're here to uh, look at your Black Portraits project. Yes, please. And um, I wonder if you can tell us a little bit about it. Um, where did the Black Portraits project come about? I was started. I couldn't paint him. He's in prison. Although he's being uh, given the Nobel Peace Prize, he's in prison because he's an activist in China since about 1989. Um, and he hates the Tiananmen Square because he was part of that. And I was moved to paint a portrait about him. But being a portrait painter, I couldn't actually paint him. He needs to be in front of me to do that. I had his face penciled in. Then I thought, well, if I mix up a lot of black, thick, what they call impasto oil paint, and a big brush, I could just get his face and what he looks like, which would be interesting. But doing all that and getting involved in the story actually behind the Ojabo, I got interested in a lot of other human rights activists, lawyers, journalists, bloggers, tweeters, from around the world that had either been killed for what they were doing or were in prison and sometimes for a very long time. And those stories I felt I could make paintings out of as well, but I couldn't see them, so I paint there face in black. So if we take this one over here, this is Flory Bear Chibaya, and he's in the Congo. And he is uh, a sort of, he's a lawyer, but he worked in an office, and so hence the office, and he had a surgery of, of people. These are mostly uh, mothers um, and children and sisters and sometimes fathers, of people whose husbands and brothers had disappeared, murdered, nobody knew. And he ran this organisation called The Voice of the Voiceless and would dig deeply into what had happened to these people. And he did this for years and years and years. And then he was found mysteriously dead on his way to the police station for an inquiry. And these people now have no voice. The images I get from images on the internet, so but I make compose a picture out of them. I'll never be able to paint him. Because as is described in this painting, he's dead. And that shows something of the anguish that these people go through when they've lost the people they love, family members. It was Dr. Binyak Sen, who's a paediatrician and world health specialist in India, who comes from uh, Raipur in the Chhattisgarh district who have their lands taken away from them if, uh, say, the local government or um, big business wants to put in uh, a mine or a reservoir and they're moved off the land with, say, five pounds compensation or the equivalent, which is, uh, there's nowhere else you can set up. So they move somewhere else in the forest. There's a problem that's been going, almost a civil war in parts of India, between what they call the Maoist army here, that's these people here that are described here, and the police. So the police get killed, the Adivasi tribes get killed, so that's this part of the painting. And Dr. Sen, who's a pacifist, has been accused quite wrongly, uh, falsely, by the Chhattisgarh government. The painting is actually, if I can find it here, has got a title. It's being a conduit between Maoists. 
He has just been awarded the Gandhi Foundation Peace Award and he came to London last week to receive it. And he came with his wife. Now I went uh, to India, in, uh, to Raipur in India in 2011. Uh, because he was free, I thought, well now I can actually paint him. And he agreed to that. And he came here um, a few days ago to see the finished portrait. And it's the idea for everyone who's painted in silhouette, um, yes, in every, black. Yes, yes. Uh, if they come out of prison and I can arrange to meet them, because they're all in hostile countries and it doesn't endanger them in any way and they don't get put back in prison because it's quite a political statement that we're allowing other people in the world to see through painting. Um, then yes, I will paint their actual portrait and that has been agreed with a number of them and uh, others I hope will come out, I hope a whole lot come out of prison naturally, but some of them have been killed so they will never have their portrait painted, certainly by me. Um, as with Flora Bechabea. We also sometimes they disappear, you don't know where they are and I painted this gentleman over here who is from Bahrain, and it's known as the Bahraini Blogger. Formula One racing was going to be held there. Um, it wasn't held there, and there was more trouble to, all around um, the political situation and how it links in with the Ar Arab Spring. Um, and as you know, you might remember the tanks came in from Saudi Arabia. Um, and then he was he, he was put back in prison and now he's disappeared altogether so I don't know, nobody knows where he is so if anybody can tell me where he is I'll be very, very, very grateful to know because I think it's not just me that wants to know what's happened to him but there's a whole story here that you can easily find on the internet about the situation in, uh, in Bahrain it's changing daily as is the situation in uh, West Papua there's a gentleman from West Papua, Philip Karma, that I've painted also with a black portrait. Um, you can find out more about him on my website. You can find a lot about him uh, on the internet. And there's a moving situation, there's a moving, changing story there. Day, um, there's atrocities going on there last week, torching of villages. Philip Karma is in prison for raising the West Papuan flag. So in that painting, you'll see the flag being raised. You'll see Philip Karma uh, painted in black oil paint like this. So Paul, you've you've, you've completed fifteen of these yes. portraits, yes. these yes, black right. portraits. Yes, yes. And and I've done another five watercolors. So the, the idea was to have twenty to start with uh, to get them exhibited. And and where do you hope them? Where do you hope for them to be exhibited? Well. That's, um, I've got some good news here, you could, if you could call any of this good news, um, and we are in talks, um, myself and um, the Walls End Memorial Hall um, in Newcastle, which is currently being refurbished, and they hope to have a grand opening at the end of September or beginning of October, and all the portraits that I've painted uh, certainly 15 could be more, will be shown for the very first time at that exhibit. Anything? Yeah, and I think, um, you know, you favour exhibiting in public places rather yes. than galleries. Yeah, this is, this is these, these are not about the paintings, these are about the people that are in the paintings. So people will come to see paintings and see how they're painted and talk about that side of things. But I don't mind if people look right past all that and look at the images, look at what the statements, the story. I don't want these to be in a place where only where people are afraid to go into, for instance, an art gallery, where people don't. You, some people wouldn't be seen dead in an art gallery. It's not part of their world. But they would like to know about these people. People have got a right to know about what's going on in different par parts of the world different countries that have different, different governance to our own and how that in fact impacts on our own governance.
where it's creeping along in different ways. If we are not being put in jail, where are we? Uh, what happened to somebody who got killed when the banking riots in London? You know, what, what happened? That policeman lost his temper or something, which... You, you know, you there's, there's, there. there's, there's currently a trial going on that's about right. that, isn't there? Yeah, yeah so perhaps right. we uh, exactly. so shouldn't, shouldn't mention too much that. more no, about no, that. No, I won't mention any more about that. But it, it is to do with also what's happening in our country now. So I would, you know, I would love coach loads of people, including you know, secondary school children, students. Even one person said, I think infant school children would be interested in some of these paintings. But they love paintings, they love pictures, they love stories. And it introduces them to something they wouldn't generally know about, not just because it's not in the news, which they never watch anyway. <laughs> so <laughs> so um, I would like them... I, my preference is that they are put on in the public spaces, whether that's town halls or, or whatever, where yeah. people are not afraid to go and, yes. and, see, and hear the stories. Yes, and perhaps so, find out a bit more about these people and about yes, their circumstances. Right. Yeah. If, they're, if they're fired up to do that, they're, they're all the... All the paintings are part of a bigger story, so they all link up, if you like. Um, I've got a painting of a man, Ku Hu, I think his name is, but I can't pronounce it properly because he's from Vietnam. And he's one of the black portraits. He's a lawyer. And one of the things that he is in prison for is for protesting against the president in Vietnam about the president allowing the Chinese to come in and open a bauxite or bauxite or a, you know aluminium mine, and without due, due diligence as to what would happen down river and downstream and the rest of it. So and that's just one of the things he's he's been put in prison for. Mining is a big issue. It's not, and but I can't put mines in all the paintings that have got mining as an issue. No. So there's a, there's a very colourful bauxite mine in that. But as I was saying to Binyai Sen, I'm telling you that I'm telling the story about other things in this painting, including starvation of the... Of the, the starvation, there's something like 40% of the people are starving in India. This is the biggest democracy in the world. And there's a civil war going on. How many people know about it? So I've put what is most important, I felt, about Binyak Sen. But I could have put a picture of a mine in it as well. Yeah. Because that's very, very relevant. Yeah. So you'll get different parts of the story in different paintings. But together, they tell the whole story. Paul, if um, organisations or uh, public bodies or galleries... Um, would be interested in due course in um, in displaying these images, yes. or perhaps schools even. Yes. What's the best way for them to contact you? Um, well, you can, I've got a de uh, designated website, and that is called theblackportraits.org. And on that, you can make contact with me. Um, I'm hoping the idea is that these should travel around England around Scotland, around Wales, etc. Europe, abroad, you know, people have said, can we have it in Canada? Of course. India. Binyak said, let's get it in Mumbai, in Delhi. Australians have said, because they're very, very interested in Papua New Guinea, for example, and West Papua. Let's have it in Sydney. But let's start with Wall's End Memorial Hall, because that's great to have an opportunity to get started there, and that's where I live, you know. And where, when, when are they likely to be displayed in Wall's End? Well, it's, it's, it's supposed to be opening in, uh, uh, I was told, between at the end of September, but I'm having a meeting next week, and next week I'm going up there, they're coming down here, they're going to have a look at all the paintings, look at the size of the paintings, and next week I'm going back up to Wall's End, to look at the spaces available, where's the best space in the Walls End Memorial Hall to hang them, because it's a big place, and they will probably be able to tell me more accurately more exactly yeah. when when the ex exhibition will be held. But yeah. you know, uh, th that information will be available anyway on the website. Once I know. Okay, and. Um, 
if you could sum up in one, in a, one or two sentences what your ambition is, what your aim is in completing these black portraits, yeah, how, how, would you, how would you encapsulate what you're trying to do? Well, it's interesting to say um, how would you how would it like to be en end up. In fact, this is unending. So I could carry on painting more of these paintings as long as I have breath in the ink and hold a paintbrush, which is, which is fine. Uh, and, and especially if it's the actual portraits of people who've come out of prison. My idea is actually quite a long-term thing, and that is that people have an opportunity which they currently don't seem to have, but please tell me if there is an opportunity another way, of, as children, getting to know stories which they wouldn't know, getting to know about how other countries run themselves, getting to know about why it is people get put in prison, getting to know the geography of these places and the history and the, soci and the social side of it and the political side of it. Maybe they might be interested in how I get to paint these paintings, you know, how, do you, how can you do this? So, but that's long term, because those people then can grow up always knowing that this sort of thing is going on around the world. And perhaps they don't watch the television or read many papers, they might not be, think it's quite a cool thing to do or wicked thing to do. But people love paintings. Children particularly love paintings. I, 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 you know. Yes. So, so to encapsulate it, I want this to be a chance for people to know, which I don't think, I didn't know. I didn't know about this great man in China who got the 2010 Nobel Peace Prize, Liu Xiaobo. And now I do. And I'd like other people to know. The portrait's a vehicle. It is. It's, it's a vehicle for information. It's just another, it's not high tech, but it's another powerful way of getting information across. Paul Piercy, painter from the Black Portraits uh, Project, thank you very much for talking to Good Cause TV. Thank you, Peter.